Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna to talk about three things. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about two meter single sideband, my experience with my first Yegi antenna or directional antenna for that matter, and number three, an update to MCOM tools. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, so I'll put timestamps on the screen here so you can pick and choose what you want or none at all. All right guys, see you on the roof and let's play some radio. Here we go. All right, guys, that was uh, exciting for a Sunday morning. There is a, a two meter single sideband net in Arizona called the AZ SWAT net. And uh, I wanted to get up on one of the peaks behind my house, but uh, I don't wanna trek up the Yegi for the first time. I wanna test it here. So I'm on the roof for the first time, have never been up here. So uh, it's also a nice opportunity to see uh, where I can put uh, some antennas, which is kind of cool and I guess also inspect the roof. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to do some uh, setup here, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about two meter SSB, uh, the Aero 2 antenna, my experience with that, why I bought it, and then we're gonna show you a update, a new feature on MCOM tools. All right, guys, so let's talk about uh, some experiences I've had with two meter single sideband. Uh, about four months ago, George from Pactena sent me a prototype called the Pactena Trek Mount, and I never had any experience with uh, two meter uh, horizontal dipole and single sideband, and both of my radios, the FT818 and the F857D uh, by Yesu, uh, support uh, all mode on two meters, which is nice. And the cool thing about the uh, Pactena Trek Mount is that it's a PCB that has uh, a BNC connector for a feed line, a small hole uh, so you can put the pointy end of a trekking pole as a mount point, and then you can configure the antenna with two optional BNC antennas. Um, one, as a, a or one as a vertical with a horizontal ground plane or uh, two of them side by side as a uh, horizontal dipole. And I tried that and my success was six watts was unbelievable on two meter SSB. While on that peak over there, Ruin Ridge, I hit Tucson, which is 141 miles point to point from my location and was able to check into the net we're checking into today. So that got me thinking um, about SSB being a much more capable for me for very local and regional communication um, compared to what I can do with FM. Um, even through repeaters, which is unbelievable in my opinion. So I'm hooked on it and uh, the problem I had with uh, the dipole is that while they could hear everybody or hear most people okay, um, people in the neck could partially hear me, depends on where they were located. And everybody was telling me to look into a directional antenna where I could focus uh, the beam uh, at their bearing and their location. And finally last week, I went ahead and picked up an Aero 2 Yegi antenna. Um, the one that I bought is marketed towards uh, satellite operators, but it works perfectly fine for my use case where I want to operate two meters in a horizontal dipole configuration. And uh, there's a normal uh, Tuesday net that I join, and I used it for the first time uh, this past week, and everyone on the net for the first time was able to hear me. I was getting uh, great signal reports and I could hear everybody for the first time made some QSOs with some new people that I've known have been on the net But haven't been able to communicate with them over the last uh, Six or seven nets. So for me two meter single sideband with hopefully this uh, new Yegi antenna is um, A game changer for how I want to operate. So let's take a look and let's talk about the uh, Aero 2 Yegi antenna All right, so in my pack I basically um, carrying out the uh, Arrow 2 antenna. This is the 2 meter 440 version. I am not running the 440 uh, elements, uh, but I can. And I've opted to pack it in uh, a tent stake bag that I've had, and it fits nicely in the hydration bladder on the side pocket of my Everly Stock Fact Track. The packaging material for this antenna was really nice. They use a heavy mill uh, set of uh, plastic bags, so I'm actually using it for additional uh, protection. Uh, my version is a bit longer 
uh, than the uh, three element Yegi minus uh, four elements on two meters. And the reason is I want it to perform double duty. I want to take it on the peaks or summits, but I also want to use it here at my home QTH. And I really don't mind having uh, an extra segment to carry around. All right, so like I said, uh, mine comes in three segments. And these actually have a very snug fit. Requires a little bit of pressure to put it together. And it stands about five feet tall. I haven't quite measured it. And for my use, I'm actually opting to remove the foam handle because there is a quarter inch set of threads there. And I've removed it enough times now where it fits snugly and won't come off, but now also comes off fairly easily for me to, uh, to operate. So in the uh, inner bag here that came with the packaging material, I have all my elements. And what I've done is I've numbered them. This isn't anything new. Uh, it's not terribly difficult to figure um, out where the elements go, but in the field, it would be nice for field expedient uh, communication. So I just took some uh, little stickies and put one, two, three, and four on there. All right, so this is the uh, reflector. It's the uh, bottom set of elements. Next, we need to get the driven element. And what's nice about this uh, setup is that if you are a satellite operator and want to operate on an uplink and downlink frequency, when you put on the two meter elements and the 440 elements, there is an option from Arrow to run a duplexer so that you only need one feed line. Uh, the problem I have with running a duplexer, um, I'm not a satellite operator, and number two, I believe it can only run 10 watts and I typically prefer to run 20 for this type of work. So I'm not running a duplexer at all since I don't need it, and it wouldn't work with my um, RF output power requirements. And I can't remember what this does output. I want to say it'll handle up to 150 50 watts. All right, guys, so this is the uh, essentially the Yegi. And the next thing I need to do now is unfortunately cannibalize my uh, tripod. I'm going to need to use it to, to mount this up. All right, guys, everything is set up. I actually did a goof. Um, I had the elements in reverse order, uh, mostly because I did not have the quarter inch threads on the correct side. So I made adjustments for that. But here is the um, system we're working with. So it is uh, parallel to the earth in a horizontal configuration. Again, we have four elements here, and the boom is roughly, I don't know, I'll say five feet, I'll put a correction if I screw it up, and it's just mounted on my standard uh, camera tripod that I use for filming, uh, using a uh, the base plate with the quarter inch threads. For feed line, I'm just running RG8X, and it's running into the man pack that everybody has seen on the channel, that's the Yaesu 857D. We'll be running uh, about 20 watts on that rig today. All right, guys, let's join the net and uh, see you in a bit. Kilo Tango 1 Romeo Uniform November. Yeah, sounds good. I can't hang out for the net, and I'm actually recording this for YouTube. Would you mind pointing out my direction? I just want to get a good signal report since I'm running a 2-meter Yegi for the first time on my roof. Back to you. Okay, Gaston, uh, you got it. Uh, is this a little better for you? Yeah, you're uh, blowing out my front end. Fantastic signal. You're at least uh, 10 to 20 over S9 on my end. QSL? Okay, Gaston. Yeah, down near Tucson, I've got your 5 and 8. Five and eight, so the new antenna is working uh, terrific. I, I just haven't heard you this song before. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, I'll try to stick around for as much, but I do appreciate the 5.8 and letting me participate as always. Uh, so, I'll say 73 just in case I can't make it around for uh, the full hour on the roof. Back to you. KT, when are you in clear? Uh, let me get some more chickens from the Phoenix area. K7 EME. WD7R. Good morning, Doug. That's Mike. He's a good guy. He's our local two-meter two 
is our local round table. Two meter SSB net control operator. Fantastic ham. Cheers, Mike. Yeah, actually, I'm recording a YouTube video uh, today that I'll release today, so I'll share it with you, Doug, so you can see it and uh, see what you sound like. But yeah, it's an Aero 2 uh, 4 element on 2 meter antenna, and I'm running it uh, horizontally, and I think this is the first time I'm able to pretty much copy everybody. Uh, in terms of the rotator, uh, I'm doing it with a uh, GPS uh, compass on my watch and just rotating it after I look up the call sign. So uh, not, not much more in traffic other than very happy with the uh, signal reports and hearing everybody today. Uh, K7 EME, KT1 RUN. Back to you, Net Control. All right, guys. Well, I will call that a success. While I love the uh, Pactana truck mount uh, for two meter single sideband in the field, um, going to a directional antenna absolutely has opened up new opportunities for me on the air. Uh, that contact, again, was over 140 miles. Um, so I just wanted to share this experience. And um, honestly, I probably could have gone a little bit cheaper on this antenna because I don't really need 70 centimeters. And I'm wondering how much difference in performance I would see with the uh, smaller arrow tube that just has the two sections and just the three elements. But uh, yeah, I got a 5.8 uh, signal report. And as soon as net control turned the beam around to me, um, I was uh, slightly over S9, so very happy. Uh, again, I'm very new to all of this, so uh, feel free to comment down below uh, if you have um, anything you want to add or any corrections I need. But really, the point here is to kind of share these experiences with the new hams and kind of the options they have in terms of antennas. All right, fellas, now it's finally time for the MCOM Tools update. But uh, before we do that, I want to give a big shout out and a even larger thank you to everybody who's supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Um, you have no idea how much that helps support uh, this little channel. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, the last time we uh, did an update, I think uh, I was talking about some features I added for offline, off-grid FCC call lookups, um, in addition to a few other things. But uh, I built on top of that support to support the activities I'm doing today. So since I have a GPS dongle on my Raspberry Pi and the MCOM tool software project that I'm working on allows me to take my GPS coordinates and uh, calculate the distance point to point to the remote operator using the data I've collected in that offline search index, I was able to get a rough distance. Well, with two GPS coordinates, my location and the remote operator, I can also calculate the bearing and that is the new feature. Let's take a quick look. All right, so I took a, a few call signs during uh, the net. Uh, the first one and most important was the net control operator uh, K7 EME, Doug. And Doug, thank you for running that net. So let's go ahead and go to the call lookup area here. And we're going to go ahead and enter in his call sign, Kilo 7 Echo Mike Echo. And let's do a search. And we can see there that we have Doug from Arizona. His grid square is Delta Mike 42. And he's 119 miles from my location point to point. Uh, the, the GPS or the coordinates on his side are a little bit off. It's actually tied to the zip code, uh, but that's just a performance um, design feature that I've decided to um, as part of the implementation. And he is 154 degrees from my location. So the way this works is I have a GPS watch. I also have a compass in my chest rig, and I guess I could even use the compass on the iPhone. And all I do is stand behind the, um, the antenna, place my watch over here, and then rotate to get to his bearing. And then I make slight adjustments a, a few degrees at a time until I get an even better signal. So really, that's it, guys. Um, not a whole lot there, but another valuable tool in my mind for the field. Uh, with that said, I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, consider two meter single sideband. It is fantastic. And if there are any real seasoned hams that have more experience than I do, which is everybody, um, are there any good two meter only all mode rigs that um, are somewhat portable? Um, I can't seem to find one at all for whatever reason. And uh, for 2022, if I don't find one, I think I'm going to take on a small project. Actually, 
a large project to build a two meter SSB uh, man pack built around the HackRF uh, SDR. All right, I'll see you guys. I've been talking too much and I need to get off the roof and stop cooking. See you later.